Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and uh, every Thursday we get together and we make art. You just saw last week's art, which was uh, a fantastic collaboration that we did with Lindsay Wyrick, the frugal crafter, and we did an art relay and drew gorgeous gourds by the uh, truckload. So um, that was a lot of fun, a lot of kind of chaos, but lots of interesting interpretations and variations on the theme. And today we're going to do something else, something new. Is there anybody new here who hasn't been here? Sang Sub Lee from South Korea. Nice to see you. The Cookie Dough Animator. Fascinating name. Um, yes, well, it's nice to, to see a lot of familiar faces. And if you're new, hop into the commentary and just tell us about it. Um, and yes, okay, so it's nice, nice to meet some new people. Fish 070912. Interesting. Well, good. Well, <clears throat> thank you for being here. Let's talk about some interesting stuff, and then let's get on with some drawings. What do you say? Um, I wanted to talk about, briefly, about um, our podcast, because we had a really interesting episode this week with uh, my friend Helen Birch, who is an author and a professor and various other things. And we, do, we were talking about the whole kind of nature of what it is to be an artist. And, you know, I think it's something we all struggle with. I certainly have had that issue. Am I an artist? What does that even mean? You know, am I supposed to be an artist? Uh, what if I call myself an artist? What will happen? We talked about, about this kind of topic, but from a slightly different point of view, which is, um, are we supposed to do certain things as artists to make our art kind of feel like it's fitting in with what we see in museums and galleries and in the kind of sort of, I was going to say the straight art world, but the, 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 the commercial art world or the, the, the art business world, you know, the, that world that, um, you know, is kind of intimidating, kind of imposing. And how do we fit into that if we're just people who like making art? I was going to say amateurs, but that's not even really what it is. Um, I think it's really more just how do we find our place and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether we fit in or not. So it was a really interesting conversation. She's super smart. And, uh, you know, if you if you want to have something to listen to while you draw, check out our podcast. We do a new episode every Monday. Um, I also wanted to uh, remind you that we have Yummy Color. Our new workshop with Lindsay, who I mentioned before, is going to be teaching this weekend and on Saturday, it's not too late to sign up for it. And we're going to be working with combining colored pencils, watercolor, various other things to get really super intense results. And we're going to be drawing desserts too, different kinds of desserts. It's a really cool um, workshop. And uh, you're going to walk away with three really nice pieces of art, if nothing else. But I think you'll walk away with much more than that, which is really a whole new approach to, to making art that I think will be really um, inspiring to you. Um, what else? Yeah, school.tiny.us slash yum. Or just go to sketchbookschool.com. What else? Uh, Hanamula has given me some, some nice new harmony. I really like harmony. It is, uh, it's sort of a, it's basically, it's a watercolor pad. But I asked them to give me the hot press one because I like the hot press smooth paper. And, uh, you know, that's, I, I generally like hot press rather than cold press just because I find the kind of mixed media approach I use works best with that. But, ooh, a bird just hit my window. Scary. Um, so, yes, Hanamula is giving us not sure how many, but several, hopefully, or at least one, Anamula um, Harmony watercolor pad to somebody who wants it. And if you want it, write to us. Send us your U.S. mailing address uh, to info at sketch, sketchbookschool.com um, and just tell us what you think. You know, why, why, why is this of interest to you? Um, you know, I personally, you'll see me using it. But uh, tell us, like, why do you need 
a nice watercolor pad. We all do, but why do you need one? Tell us. And we will randomly select somebody with a great answer. And uh, yes, we're not sure exactly how many we're giving away. I think it's at least, I know it's at least one, but probably more. Hanamule is very generous. As, um, and so, yes, who else? Who else is generous? Uh, I think we're going to have Windsor Newton coming in too. Windsor Newton's giving away this uh, metallic watercolor set. I've used it a few times here on uh, Draw With Me. And it's if you've never used, well, if you've never used watercolor, it's time to start. But if you've never used metallic watercolor, it's really interesting, and you can mix it with regular watercolor and get really cool effects. I might use my set today. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes. But I've got it standing by just in case. <sighs> All right. Let's talk about today and how we're gonna get how what we're gonna make that's gonna be um, fun. So I like to come up with some kind of an idea in advance. <laughs> Of what the hell we're going to do. And one of the sources I look for information is I go and say, um, there's all these endless holidays. I'm sure you've heard of them. There's National Goiter Week and, uh, you know, National Mallard Duck Month and things like that. I don't know who comes up with these things, but there's a lot of them. And so I go and I and I sort of look into like, well, what is available today? And so I looked at the list for today, right? And here's some of the things that I came up with. Today is National M&M Day. Not M&M as in, uh, you know, Detroit hip-hop fame, but the candy. And I was like, well, I don't know if I feel like drawing that. Um, it is also Disaster Day. Why is that something that would need to be celebrated? I'm not sure. It is also, if let's say, okay, let's. What if we draw some famous people? Well, whose birthday is today? Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, AOC, but also Tiffany Trump. I thought let's stay away from that subject entirely. Um, what else? Oh, it's also National No Bra Day, in recognition of. Breast Cancer Awareness National. I thought, interesting, but probably not appropriate for um, for what we do here on Draw With Me. So I thought, okay, well, then, oh, it's also Black Cat Awareness Month. It's National Pizza Month, but isn't every month National Pizza Month? It's Canadian Library Month. Yeah, I know. I feel the same way. Um, it is National Fire Prevention Month. Not sure about that. It's Emotional Intelligence Awareness Month. It's also National Train Your Brain Day. Well, that seemed appropriate. Not sure how we would draw that, so we're not going to. And then I went and I said, okay, today isn't the day to celebrate. Let's look at tomorrow. Let's look at tomorrow's events. And that's when I came up with or was presented with the absolute perfect choice for us. Today is Be Bald and Be Free Day. I'm not sure how many of you have celebrated this on a regular basis. I know I do regularly. Be Bald and Be Free Day. So, if you had a lot of... Uh, hair colored markers and plans to draw flowing tresses today you won't be because we will be drawing famous bald people you can draw them however you like you could draw hair on them if you wanted to but that's what we're going to be approaching celebrating baldness and i would i have decided to take today as an opportunity to speak to all of you, all 250 of, or however many people you are here, however many people watching this video, and proudly announce that I am a bald man. Baldish. Not completely shaven bald, not cue bald bald, but bald enough to, be, to qualify. 
And Jen thought we were drawing eagles. Sorry. You could draw bold ones if you want, of course. Nice. But yes, so be bold and be free day. Are you ready? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set a timer. Just It's not going to be a mad dash thing. I just want to set a timer just to keep a sense of perspective because I'd like to draw a few different ones because I'd like us to think about how do we draw bold people so they don't all look alike, right? That's part of the problem. You know, that old joke about the two bold men put your heads together and make an ass of yourself. Well, we're not going to be making asses of ourselves today and we're going to try and make bold men and recognize the differences between them. We're not all alike. Speaking as a representative of the, of the species. So think about it. Think about how you're going to approach it. I'm going to draw. I think we're going to. I think we have five or six uh, heads to draw, and we're going to spend about five minutes on each one. That gives us a good time. And then um, I'm going to watercolor them as well, and I'm going to probably try and fit them all on one page, and just do a, a page. Of, uh, of bald people. Uh, does Larry David count because he has hair on side? I think he would be he would qualify as bald. I'm focusing on almost exclusively completely bald, like shaven head bald, just because it's more interesting. But um, so yes, Greta says we need less time to draw since there's no hair. It's true, but you know it's like that old thing they say: if you're a bald man. You spend less money on shampoo, but you spend more money on soap washing your face because you have a bigger face. So you might still need more watercolor or whatever it is to color that entire gigantic expanse of hairlessness. Chris is objecting to my use of a timer. And uh, I think that that is, that is fine. But uh, don't get your... I was going to say, there's some kind of a hair or bold. Don't get your hair on fire over this. All right, here we go. So I've pulled a few bold people <laughs> out of the archives. I have this massive archive of bold people, and I've pulled a few of them out. Some of them, you, you know, if you're under my age, you'll probably say, who the hell are these people? So a few of them may seem obscure to you, but we'll talk about who they are as we, as we draw them. And if even if you don't know who the hell they are, it's just an interesting face to draw. So don't don't get overly concerned about it. All right, here we go. So here we're going to start with I think a classic bold man, and one of the one of the like there was a time when it was so weird for people to be bald, you know, and men wore toupees. I mean, I guess maybe some men do wear to wear toupees, but we don't know because they're so incredibly. Uh, lifelike that we don't even know that they're actually masking their baldness with fake hair. But but it was pretty odd to be bald and proudly bald, you know, unapologetically bald. And Yul Brynner was really one of the first sort of kind of a bald sex symbol, right? Wasn't he? I think he was, um, you know, the king and I. He was, but he was also, you know, and there was a time when he was, I think he was in movies or TV shows, or something, probably in movies, and he wasn't fully bald. He's a Russian, but uh, yeah, and then he was in The King and I, and The King and I was like, you know, this huge Roger and Hammerstein musical. And uh, suddenly people were like, huh, that's kind of interesting, kind of cool that he's a bald dude. Yet he's, you know, he's appealing. I don't know how appealing he was in that role. I mean, he was sort of a bit of a pig, but you know, he was still charismatic in his way. He didn't let his hairlessness hold him back. Let's put it that way. So yeah. Very intense eyes he has, too, right? See if you can capture that intensity. This is obviously not a king and I moment uh, in, 
this particular photo, but he also has these sort of surprisingly full Slavic or Slavic lip, lips. Is he Slavic? He's Russian. I know that. I think I'm going to probably run out of time on this one, but I think I'm going to maybe cheat because I'm, I'm trying out this set of um, these Winsor Newton watercolors that I'm kind of new to. They have this set that is just, um, just colors for faces. It's a portraits set. So, let's see how this goes. Yeah, I'm worried I'm going to run out of time before I finish it. Because I'm trying to do a lot in a little time. But this will get easier as I move ahead, I think. Let's see. Have you thought of some more bald people who you think might show up on the list? Or other famous bald people who you think would be cool to draw? I may not have them on my list, but you're certainly free to carry on and to make your own list. All right, I'm cheating a bit because... that but um yeah we're kind of done that was fast and furious but here we go speaking of famous ball people i see you've thrown in some suggestions the hulk is the hulk bald he's green darlene says we need more time for faces you know, I could I could adjust it, okay? Maybe I'll go back and I'll adjust it. Let me see. All right, I can adjust this. I have the power. I'm going to make it five minutes. Didn't I say five minutes in the first place? Anyway, yeah. All right, so we'll have a bit more time, but we're not. We're gonna. We're done with Yule. We're gonna move on, and we're gonna do. Who loves your baby? Do you remember this guy? He was another guy who kind of made being bald into a thing. I don't know how much of a sex symbol he was, was he? Telly Savalas. He was he was he was sort of a pioneer in a sense because he was he was bald and he was um, Greek and he just didn't give a damn. He was tough. He was a tough guy. I don't know how much of a tough guy he had been earlier in his career, but but certainly Kojak, which is this character that he played, was a tough guy who always had a lollipop for some reason. Not sure what they thought they were accomplishing with that. But he has kind of an interesting nose as well as being bald. So and he has that sort of mole on his cheek. Again, rather full lips. He's a real sort of 70s icon. You can even see like the length of his collar. His shirt collar in this. Kind of. Looks almost like a polyester. <laughs> Double knit suit that he's wearing, but yeah. But we are, we are, gonna have five minutes to draw him. But you've only got three left, so get on it. You're still sharpening your pencil. Oof, I'm make, I'm, I'm not doing him justice. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's because I got his nose completely wrong from the beginning, and that 
threw everything else off. So he's more slightly hooked, his nose is. Not, he's not really an attractive guy, I gotta say. He's got a mole, he's got a big nose, he's got a bald head, and yet, he was a TV star. For some reason. I can't, I don't even, I, have I ever watched the show? Probably. Probably. I don't really remember. It's not the kind of thing I really watched when I was a kid. So. But I think when you think of bald guys, you definitely think of, of him. Kojak, you know, I think people even used to refer to having a shaven head as Kojak, like that hairstyle is Kojak somehow. A baby. What was a statement? Was a, a, a phrase of his? But was that like a? Was it a song? Did he? Why do I think of it as being musical? Like, did he ever record an album? Yep, that was the sound of me dropping all my paintbrushes on the floor. I don't know, five minutes is feeling like a long time now. I want us to get through all these. Phew. Okay. Take a shot. Let's move on to the next individual. Are you ready? Who do you think it's going to be? You're right. All you geology fans out there, this is the man who might be the next president of the United States. It certainly would be interesting if he was. Dwayne. The Rock. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to start getting a bit more exaggerated with these drawings because... The Rock is sort of an exaggerated f person, but in some ways. I think he's... He's another sex symbol, wouldn't you say? The Rock? JJ? JJ's a big fan of The Rock. And, uh, you know, I... I say, okay, that's okay, that's good. Because, I mean, she's married to me. So if this reveals her taste in men, then I guess I'm okay. <laughs> Although I might be the exception that, as they say, proves the rule. The Rock has, like, he has good furrowed brows, things like that. He's, of course, big and muscular, too. But I've made him look a little weedier. In the lips. Maybe that's a key to, to successful baldness is having kind of pronounced lips. What do you think? I've kind of made his eyes a bit askew, but I, I don't I think he I think he's good with that. 
Yeah, I've made his head a bit smaller. Or narrower than it really is. Or at least what it is outside of my head. Inside my head, it's got a narrower head. So that's why I painted him this way. Dwayne Johnson. Is anybody out there saying, who's this guy? If you are, it's time to get hip to The Rock. I think his not for a good TV show just got renewed. This is actually my favorite one so far. Yeah, this is like so good that... <laughs> I'm going to say a strange thing now, but it's the first thing that popped into my mind, which is, this is so good that it almost looks like somebody else did it. Thank you, Mr. Monkey. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, obviously. Self-congratulations are about to end. Let's move on to the next person. Who's it going to be? I think we'll end up with an interesting page, though. You know, because I said, at first it seemed like the problem we were going to have to deal with was how do we make all these guys or people seem uh, differentiated. But now, see, this is often what happens is it, take, it takes it can take a couple um, couple to go. So uh, Tammy's asking me what watercolors I'm using. Um, I'm using these. It's a special. It's a set that Winsor Newton makes. Uh, Cotman makes that is just. For portraits so it has like a limited range it's only got it's got eight colors in it and they're just like the portrait colors so cad yellow red rose matter yellow ochre burnt sienna burnt umber indigo chinese white so it's just the tool for today okay here we go ready for the next one samuel l Big fan of Samuel L. Jackson. In some ways, he's a caricature of himself. Sometimes, you know, but that's what happens when you're when you're sort of iconic. Is you, you know, you tend to be stereotyped as a certain kind of a character, and then you lean into that. And I think he's an example of that. But he's a tough guy. A good version of a tough guy. What makes him what makes him distinct though? Right? The rock was in some ways easier. Like this is not doesn't seem entirely like a Samuel L. Jackson kind of pose. He seems like too open and cheery. I always think of him as being a bit more kind of threatening and Almost sarcastic in his threateningness. This is just him being himself, I guess. But he has, you notice how his, the bridge of his nose is really deep set? 
Like his eyes are kind of deep set. Nose is deep set. Nose is kind of narrow. Doesn't seem to have particularly thick lips, though, or juicy lips like our previous three fellows. But he has this somewhat hair, facial hair. It's another thing you see with bald guys, they can kind of overcompensate with facial hair. It's a thing. It's like that whole look where guys have a bald head and a full beard, like a big, gigantic beard. That's, that's a look. What is it with Samuel L? What is this? Yeah, I'm not sure about this one, but it's okay. gets different when we add some color to him. See, I want to try and capture that sort of fact that his nose, the bridge of his nose goes in like that. Yeah, mine just looks like more of a generic guy somehow. I don't know that you would know that it was Samuel L. But I'll know, and that's all that matters. Yeah, this is this is a good amount of time I think for doing this. Thank you for suggesting that that we adjust the time. Okay. That's a good one, Garrett. Um, yeah. Okay, well, Vassal says my Samuel turned into Mike Tyson. Well, here's how we can remedy that. How about it? You see, you're ahead of your time. That's all, Vassal. So now, if you can draw Mike Tyson and make him look like Samuel L. Jackson, then we'll be in business. All right, so let's, let's look at Tyson for a second. So his face is much broader, not surprisingly. And uh, it's kind of shorter, in a way. You'll notice that I'm using a pencil today, and I'm just starting to have that pencil anxiety that I get, which is that I start to, like, get a little sketchy, a little wobbly, because I'm drawing with a pencil, and I'm like, oh, I'm just I'm getting a little sketchy here. And uh, that's not the way I like to draw, so I'll try and pull back on that impulse. 
Because you see here, in fact, I'm going to use even go so far as to use an eraser. You know why? Because it bothers me that this looks like hair. <sighs> looks like hair. That's all. Because I was sort of indecisive about my lines, and I don't like, I don't want that to happen. So, all right. So Tyson has these kind of weird eyebrows that are sort of fragmented. He has. Ears that kind of stick out from his head, but are kind of. Um, there we go. And he has pretty small eyes, kind of deeply set. He has this, this part, this fold above his eye is pretty big. So I want to capture all that. It's a really broad nose, but but it doesn't stick out very far from his face. His eyes are, are very black, but also very shiny. So this is, again, one of those drawings that, like when you do a drawing like this, that you know you're going to watercolor, sometimes it doesn't matter that the drawing is a bit inaccurate, because really, so often the watercolor can just make such a ch difference and, and kind of bring it alive and actually help you to make the likeness better. And at other times, it can be a goddamn mess. We'll see what this is going to be. I saw Mike Tyson fight a number of times in New York, Madison Square Garden. So one of his first fights that lasted for about 80 seconds. It was kind of terrifying. See, like his cheeks are kind of roundish. Cherubic. And then the bridge of his nose actually stands out a little bit from the kind of wider part of his nose. Really, to me, the most iconic thing about Tyson is is the way that his I'm not even sure what that's called that sort of eyelid thing that hangs down. Yeah, I didn't even put in his tattoo. Give me a break. The tattoo is so I don't know. It's hard to know what to think about it. All right. Well, the one, well I just want to do one more thing, which is to just tight put in that. Those shiny irises. Okay. Slightly less successful. Um, let's move on. We have time for... Okay. This guy should be fast, right? Got a really big ear. It's like the first, he's sort of the, ant. this guy is like the antithesis of everybody else we've been drawing. It's 
It's kind of like a bald guy normally means a tough guy. Of course, this is the ultimate not tough guy. Although, of course, Gandhi was very tough in his way. But yet, obviously not violent. It's the whole point. Kind of a pickle nose, right? Doesn't seem to be completely bald. Looking at this picture carefully. Seems like he has a little bit of a, a little bit of stubble at the top. I'm just going to get into it because I'm facial hair that he has. Um, I'm just going to do it in watercolor. I'm going to draw it. I always leave the eyes for last, which I can't entirely explain why, but it's probably because that's that's kind of the thing that you know makes the portrait come alive. Why you ask? Would you want to wait that long to make them come alive? Um, I don't know. But when you when you're racing as we are here, not racing exactly, but when we're working under deadline, a timeline, it, uh, you f and you forget to do the eyes, it's, or you forget to concentrate on the eyes, it, uh, it's problematic. This might be an opportunity to use my Chinese white Set comes with Chinese white. No, it probably wasn't that opportunity that I thought it was. Yeah, this is when you're working under this kind of a pressure, time pressure, it's not really the f best time to experiment with a brand new art material, but probably better to take a little bit of time privately for that. Yeah, this is a totally different kind of style of portrait somehow, but it's actually I'm not I'm not too unhappy with it. Got a few little dots of hair on his noggin. Yeah, this is another one of those like hmm, somebody else might have done this one. I might be channeling somebody else in doing that one. I don't know how great the the um, resemblance is, but I kind of like it as a as a portrait. All right, we're about out of time. Rennie, yes. Renny, were you asking if that was Gandhi? Yes, that was Gandhi. Mahatma Mohandas Gandhi, or Ma Mohandas Mahatma Gandhi. Ali didn't want to draw Mike Tyson. Okay. Um, here we go. There we go. I think it's high time that we drew a woman. How do I find room for her on the page? I think right down here. Draw. Let's 
What a beautiful voice she has. Nothing compares to her. Huge, huge eyes, made even more so by her this decision to shave her head. She, um, yeah, it's not like if it was completely shaven, I think that would be, it would feel somehow more unwell or something. I don't know. But the fact that she has these really thick eyebrows and she has a little bit of hair. There was this period where women were doing this. I mean, there was uh, Demi Moore did it at one point. Um, yeah, and of course, there's the Oscar controversy, the slap caused by the controversy over a woman with shaven head, or well, alopecia at least, caused her to. This is all about the eyes, and that's really what I should... I should have drawn this bigger so I could have more and more focus on her eyes. And again, I did this sort of rough and shaggy look that makes it look like she actually has some hair. And so, again, you may never have seen me use an eraser before and maybe even wondered if I own one, but sorry to to shock you in this way. Sorry, I'm not talking much because this is more challenging. Because <laughs> she's a beautiful woman and there's nothing worse than doing an unattractive portrait of a beautiful woman. They can get away with it with Telly Savalas. You don't want to get away with it with Sinead O'Connor, though. We don't want to stumble into it with her, let's say. Yeah, it's funny, she's, she, because she has these giant eyes, she always seems sort of, you know, um, waif-like or vulnerable, but she's obviously like a really powerful person as well. So, to kind of bear that in mind. Damn timer. All right, well, let me just quickly look at the whole thing. What do you think? Is 
Okay, I mean, it's sort of an interesting page. A little messy. But they do look different from each other, which is sort of what I was going for, right? Um, so, yeah, interesting experience. Interesting thing to do. I hope you had fun doing it, too. Ah. This is one of those drawings that, yeah, I can, I mean, Samuel L. Jackson's starting to look a bit more like himself now, like more recognizably him. It may be because I just spent all this time staring at his picture, but yeah. Drawings can do that sometimes. You can be like hunkered down in their face and you don't even know what's going on in a portrait. Then you step back and you go, yeah, I, because I caught, because I looked at all the features, it actually does come together and look like that. But sometimes catching the essence of who they are is, comes to you right away like I did when I was drawing the rock but sometimes it's sort of like only later on do you realize how these pieces came together and my Mike Tyson is very smiley and jolly so um, not quite exactly Mike Tyson so anyway this was fun um, Martina says you'd never have tried it without me good or without all of us good Ah, so that was interesting. I look forward to seeing what you've done with it. Like, where did you go with your baldies? Your, your, the bald seven. Um, and, you know, it's interesting to think, like, what do you do when you push yourself in a direction like this, where you're pushing yourself to do something you wouldn't do normally? You know, it's portraits of celebrities, one of the hardest things to do. I mean, portraits of... Your mother-in-law might be harder, but portraits of your celebrities that everybody knows what they look like can be really intimidating, really challenging. And, you know, you got to keep doing it. you got to kind of press through it. And then, you know, you start to say, okay, it's pretty good, pretty good. But, like, I think working quickly like this is good, too, because it helps you to not get too bogged down in the details and just focus on, you know, the gist of it. So, um, yeah. Kara, welcome. Thanks for joining us. I hope you will be back. Um, and that was that was really nice to, to have you here with us. Um, Greta says she's always afraid to draw people. Yeah, a lot of times, if you put pressure on yourself, do you can do this yourself. You don't need, need me to set a timer for you. But when you set a timer you kind of don't have time to worry about it, you know? And you just, like, you just go. You just plunge into it. And that's why it was um, it was good. So, all right. So um, I want to see you drawing. I know you're nervous about it, and I know you're saying it sucks, and I don't want to share it. And I've seen a lot of people saying that in the comments. Just share it anyway. Because, you know, it's good for all of us. Hi. Do you want to tell people about the pen? Oh, the pencil I used. Yes, I'm using a 4B, a 4B pencil, Winsor Newton 4B, so it's pretty soft. And uh, yeah, that's what I was using. Nothing too magical about it. And here, of course, here's Twiggy and also JJ. Bald. Yes, Twiggy's bald, JJ's hairy. <laughs> and um, all right, so if you want to share it with, you, with me and so we can add it to the cavalcade next week, Share it on social media, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you'd like, and put hashtag SBS draw with me, SBS Sketchbook School. And if you are a member of the schoolyard, put it there and we'll find it. We'll go out, we'll track all these things down, we'll drag them kicking and screaming and throw them into the cavalcade at the beginning of next week's show. Um, again, if you want to get an op opportunity to get those Cotman Metallics watercolors, and I would definitely urge you to because they're really cool or if you'd like to get this this Hanamula um, this beautiful Harmony watercolor pad write to info at sketchbookschool.com it's only available to people with the United States mailing address because we're sponsored by the US versions of both companies so please use that and um, Art for All podcast as I mentioned Helen Birch that's also available on YouTube, by the way. If you're watching this on YouTube, we record the video as well, and you can watch it here and see our conversation, or you can listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts. Saturday is our next workshop, Yummy Color, 
I hope to see you there. And uh, we'll have fun with watercolors and colored pencils and ink and various other things. And of course, every week I write an essay about creativity, about why we're creative or why we're not creative or what gets us in the way. If you're stumbling around wishing that somebody would give you a good pep talk, that's what I do every Friday, and it's free. Just go to dannysessays.com, and I'll also send you a little book that I wrote, uh, just because I like you. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, blah, blah, blah. The usual YouTube requires requirements, and uh, that's it. I'll see you. Aaron says that one quick. It's true. It's true that there's nothing like the pressure of time of bells going off to get you moving. Um, so yeah, I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, guys.